Hi, and welcome to the Ultimate 2010 Quick Biz Bite. This is the last one of the year. Uh, I'm going to continue the trend that I had last week of trends for 2011. Uh, this week, we're going to talk about the wireless world and your business. Um, this is not about just marketing. This is about how you do business. For any of you who use a mobile device, uh, before you got one, you're probably thinking, mm, that would be nice, but I don't really need it. And once you get one, it's uh, one of those things where you think, wow, how did I ever get along without this before? A lot of that has to do with what they call ubiquitous computing. The fact that you can do so many things everywhere. You don't have to wait until you get home to do things. You don't have to wait until you get back to the office. You can do an email, whatever. So what this is doing is, number one, it's driving mobile traffic uh, to, to the limits of some cell carrier's capabilities. So if your connection's a little flaky uh, in 2010, it's probably not going to get a lot better in 2011, maybe later in the year. On the other hand, you'll see many more Wi-Fi enabled phones to help keep customers happy. Uh, if you get an Android or an AT&T, one of the things you see if you're using AT&T is AT&T Hotspots application. Uh, Starbucks is one of those places that has a deal with AT&T. So besides the Wi-Fi and McDonald's and Starbucks, they might start offering it just on the street where you live. Now, as far as Wi-Fi goes, the smart ones of you out there uh, have already installed Wi-Fi in your business if you have customers on premises. Uh, people don't say much about it beforehand, but they will let you know they really appreciate it once you do it. The new routers are smart, they're easy to set up, and they will segregate your public traffic from your business traffic. So there's no reason not to get one. Now just, just bite the bolt and do it. The subscriber rates have slowed down. There are not as many people buying phones, signing up for service. You'll see them sweeten the deal this year with more bandwidth and, and more features and so on. Now, second, to no one's surprise, the iPod will no longer be king tablet on the market. Android tablets are coming in in droves. But Gartner, overall, says that uh, the sales of, of tablets could go up to about 180%. That means about another 55 million in this country. If you don't have an application for a, 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 a tablet, that's one thing. But most people do because there are so many reasons. You know, your customers want to shop with them because they can see the picture of pretty good size. They can take it anywhere with them, sit down and share it with friends. They can hand it around like they would a picture. Uh, so if you deal with the public in any way, whether it's contractors or, or homemakers, it doesn't really matter. You better start thinking of a way to get yourself on tablets and get yourself online. 32011 will also be the year that mobile devices will begin to take the place of credit cards. You heard me right. You will start using your cell phone or your iPhone or your Android as your credit card. Uh, there are already deals being worked out with the payment vendors on how to make this happen. Developing countries have been doing it for a long time because it's easier to put up a cell network than it is to get a landline network. Um, in some places, that's the only way that, they, that they'll extend your credit. So in the next generation of Android, and uh, the, the operating system will have uh, something to help them connect. Uh, and it's, it's called uh, near-field communication. The Nokia phones, next-generation Nokias will have it automatically built in. And what it does is um, it looks around for a terminal, like a point-of-sale terminal, a credit card terminal, and it talks to that securely and sends your information to, you, to the people who pay for you, whether it's your bank or another firm. So it's not going to be big yet, but I would expect by mid-year, uh, big change like uh, McDonald's, Lowe's, uh, Walmart, uh, Chili's, uh, some of those could have it. Uh, some people are saying it'll be fully adopted in all retail establishments by the end of the year, but uh, I'm a little skeptical of that. But I can see where the major brands, where the major national chains will be doing it. Fourth, this is also the year that they're saying that online giving, that, that mobile giving is going to come into the fore. Uh, you consider the relief efforts for Haiti netted uh, around $43 million just in mobile donations alone. So the potential is there. Uh, best reports say that it'll probably be around by third quarter of next year, but you know, not everywhere, but some of the bigger ones, like United Way, will be using it. Uh, fifth and best news of all, mobile plans should continue to fall in price. Uh, prepaid Android phones are coming out later this year, which will help push it down. Any new advancement in, in pay-as-you-go usually uh, means it uh, cheaper prices for us. So, But on the other hand, I expect to see some movement toward uh, metered usage. Uh, for instance, now if you, uh, with the electric company, if you use more 
you know, 50% more this month than you did last month. They don't send you a bill with surcharges for using more than you did. They just send you a bill. Um, you'll start to see more of that with carriers as they try to retain subscribers and add features that people want to keep them happy. Um, so you consider that the average user uh, uses about 150 megabytes of data a month. Let's say you wanted to rent a Netflix film. Uh, or an iTunes film or whatever blockbuster doesn't really matter. Let's say the film was five bucks Well, let's say you have a data plan like mine where you got 200 meg and By the time you're done downloading that movie it will have cost you between 25 and 50 dollars depending on service overages on on data overages next even if something sounds really good, doesn't mean the name's good. Uh, I can't get used to the name cloud computing. It sounds like something out of the Jetsons or, or uh, I don't know, My Little Pony or something like that. Anyway, cloud computing is a great concept, uh, provided the network stays stable. But what it allows you to do is use applications that are out on the web. You don't have to have anything on your servers. You still need some help with IT, but you don't have to have the servers that you once had. What it allows you to do is use a tablet, a smartphone, a laptop from anywhere in the world, and the application runs on that server, not on their machine. So you don't have to load their machine down with a ton of software. Despite the name, you will see more applications in the field. Uh, let's say you've got somebody out, a service person out there with a tablet. They don't have to load up a bunch of software on the tablet or in a laptop. It's all sitting out in the cloud. You know, it's also known as software as a service, SAAS. But it's sitting out there, and they just have a small applet, a little bitty program, which says, okay, log me in and let me do my thing. And that's really all it has to do. It identifies you and lets you do all of it there. For instance, Apple uh, built a big data center in North Carolina. They expect mobile me users to be able to and to upload entire libraries of of films and movies and music and whatever uh, on there, and you can get them anywhere. Now the cool thing is, according to the plan, is that if you update something on one computer, or like a handheld, you update the title of a movie, it updates everything. It ripples through everything that you're doing. Let's just hope that uh, everything goes the way you plan for it too. Start thinking about some of these things in ways that you can incorporate mobile into what you're doing because it'll have some big payoffs for you. And if nothing else, people expect it. So I hope 2011 is great. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again next year. Take care.